Hey guys, I'm Satorial Phil. Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a recap and review on the Louis Vuitton Men's Runway Collection. This is Spring Summer 2019 and it's Virgil Abloh's inaugural collection for Louis Vuitton. He was named creative director earlier this year as a replacement for Kim Jones, who's now at Dior Homme. I think this Louis Vuitton Men's Runway Collection was probably the most anticipated runway of spring summer 2019. So in this video what I'm going to do is review some of my selected looks and for some of the accessories I'll give you a price estimate just based on what I think from looking at existing products that are pretty similar and then factoring in usually runway pieces they're a little bit more expensive just because they have something slightly different about them. For example, we saw quite a few keep alls from the runway, but even the all leather ones, there's something slightly different about them. So usually you factor in like a hundred, two hundred, maybe three hundred dollar increase from a permanent collection keep all that's the same size and pretty much same material. And at the end of this video, I'm probably just gonna do the entire runway so you can stick around if you also wanna watch the entire show. And what I'm wearing today is, this is from pre-fall 2017. This is the Fragment collaboration actually, the Louis Vuitton and Fragment. So just to be honest, I do have a biased opinion about Off-White. I'm not a customer of Off-White. I did purchase the Byredo and Off-White collaboration, the beach bag, because I thought it was a really cool silhouette. And honestly, the bag is made by Byredo. They manufacture their own leather goods. So Off-White's not really for me, just because a silhouette doesn't usually work for what I like to go for. Kind of looking at the collection objectively, I feel like it's a good first attempt by Virgil and I do think he has a lot of growing to do. I know quite a lot of people actually who's liked Louis Vuitton men's for a while, especially under Kim Jones's direction, really did not like this direction at all. Kim did insert a lot of streetwear to Louis Vuitton, but I felt like he always had a luxury touch to it. It was still clean and elegant. I think Virgil's take is a lot much more on the street side. He's experimenting with things. The chain was a big motif. I know the baggy trend is coming back. It doesn't usually work for me that well, but I do like the way he styled his the pants that were baggy. And I know Kim Jones started to do a lot of that, especially in I feel like his later seasons, he started to experiment with more baggy silhouettes. I can't say I love this collection, but I don't hate it either. I would say more on the accessories. There were maybe a couple that I liked. Although the chains more, the chains really bothered me. Maybe my opinion will change when I see them in person, but overall I didn't like any of the chain designs like being added as an accessory to the bag. I definitely did not like those clear plastic bags. I think for this entire collection was Virgil's kind of nod to the house. There's definitely a lot of references to past collections. So if you, especially if you look at the leather goods and the bags, I don't think there was really much originality besides adding the chain, but I also meant it wasn't meant to be a brand new take on the bags. I do think it was very purposeful the way he chose the designs for the accessories. And I feel like in later collections, as he grows into his role at Louis Vuitton, he's gonna start experimenting with new bag silhouettes. You could kind of see though in the steamer bags, he has that like metal pin closure. And to me, that's a nod to his own off-white brand where they use the binder clips for the women's bag closures. I feel like that there was a connection there. I think that was kind of smart. I think that was kind of cool, but I still didn't like the chains that were attached to those. On to the selected looks. This is the first look that I selected and they're going to be in order of how they were presented on the runway. This is from the introduction of the runway where all the clothes were white and they were on black models. I think he was making both an artistic and a political statement in this introduction and he also featured a few, I think there were four prominent artists 
that were featured on the runway. And this one happens to be an artist. His name is Steve Lacey. And in this look, what I like is the shared t-shirt. I mean, I know I've, we've seen the LV many times, but for some reason, I just really like the way this was designed and the simple diagonal kind of corner that you see on the sides that lead up to the middle LV. I just think that's pretty cool. I probably, if I actually got this, I wouldn't wear this just like that. I would wear something below it. Like I think a tank top would look pretty cool. The second look is also from the introduction collection. This is like a Jack shirt jacket with a belted shirt jacket that has all of these little pockets in the front and this actually reminds me of a design called utensilo it's a pretty classic design if you're into interior decorating and interior design you would be familiar with it it's something you put on the wall to organize your desk things like pens paper or pens paper clips and stuff like that this is actually featuring a sac plat sac plat too but in leather and with the white chains and i'll speak about this a little later as well this one, I thought this shirt was really, or the jacket was really interesting. To be honest, I kind of seen something like this before. I think Raph Simons did kind of a play on the blazer. And I think Gosha also recently did something where he was mixing blazers with more casual wear where it's he's literally like sliced a blazer in half and then attached it to a bomber jacket so you had this complete asymmetrical look i do like the way how it's very clean here this definitely would be something i would be interested in trying out to see if it worked for me this is definitely an eye catcher pretty unique and then he's carrying a white key ball with the monogram imprinted on it the next look it's just a hoodie. What I thought was kind of cool, it's really subtle, but on the bottom right or his bottom left of the hoodie, you see a leather tag. And that's the same leather tag that's used in some of Louis Vuitton's leather goods, like their toiletry bags. The canvas ones, the only leather part is the one that's connected at the end of the zipper. And that's usually where it says made in France or made in Italy. I just thought that was a really neat detail on this. And then the way the bag is kind of attached like a backpack. I don't think there's anything in the back. I'm not, I forgot, but it's kind of cool if it is like that, where you just get a small pouch in the front and the strap also becomes like a decorative accessory. The chain I think works a little better here because it's not really part of the bag. It's part of the strap. And this jacket I thought is pretty cool i'm not sure how i feel about it but i do like that wavy pattern that's quilted so it's it's kind of a play on like a padded motorcycle jacket but probably in a wool or neoprene material and i think it probably takes reference from people who fence the the shirts and the jackets that they wear i think have a similar vibe to this and the last selected look, I selected this just because it was the final look. It's not something I would ever pull off and frankly not super interested in it, but it's kind of considered their, their final end of the runway cap piece. And this is a rapper, by the way. This is Playboy Cardi. He recently had a onstage performance with Nicki Minaj on Saturday Night Live. And so the keep ball, this is the one that was teased in the previews. It looks a lot different here because when they did the preview, they showed you a very specific reflection of it that made it look like gold foil. That's what everyone thought, that it was going to be metallic foil, which Marc Jacobs have done before with the women's leather goods. They had silver and gold. But it, this one's actually like an oily effect similar to what Fragment did with the metal pieces when they did their Louis Vuitton collection. But what's also special here is the chain is a rainbow gradient effect. And then the pants is that the Wizard of Oz motif. I believe it suggests a yellow brick road, although it's not yellow. So those are my selected. So then next, I wanted to just go through some of my selected leather goods and also 
try to give you an estimate of pricing in terms of what I think it is. So the first one, it's my favorite, is what I call the leather steamer briefcase or east west bag. It's completely based off the steamer bag, which Louis Vuitton has had for a long time. Kim also made a few versions of it. I think the latest version was with the second Chapman Brothers collection with the illustrations. And this honestly reminds me of a larger Kelly bag. And I actually have a Kelly Depeche, which is the briefcase, discontinued briefcase version in a very similar color. So I was gonna try to find some a white chain and kind of make a parody of it. But this is my favorite leather good from the entire collection. Just based on what Louis Vuitton offers today in terms of their leather steamer backpack, it's $3,500 and that's my best guess for what this is gonna cost. It may cost a couple hundred more, but I think it's gonna be around there. The next is the larger version of this. So this is, I think it looks a lot like a Hermes Birkin HAC or the largest Birkin size, I think was a 40. And then just looking at the largest steamer that Louis Vuitton offers, which is in canvas. And Louis Vuitton seems to charge about 20% more when it's leather instead of canvas. I would estimate this at $6,700 US. The next one, I think it's a keep all 45. And the leather looks like it's pretty much almost the same as the women's emprunt line, which is like a pebble leather and it has the monogram stamped on it. And this one also has a chain detail. I think the closest one right now in the men's line is the Damier Infini, which is also leather that has the Damier pattern stamped on it. And I think because this is runway and if they do decide to keep the chain detail, it probably costs about a couple hundred more. So I would estimate this at 3,500. Next, they also have another keep all in the same pattern same material but what's really interesting here is that the leather straps that go up the side are wavy and you kind of have to do a double take at first when i looked at the pictures i thought it was a distorted pictures but when you look at the monogram behind it you realize that it's not actually distorted it's a curved piece of leather that's been stitched like that I'm estimating that this is gonna be pretty similar to the previous one, but there may be a $50 upcharge to that wavy pattern. So I would estimate this at 3,550. And then he's reintroducing the Sac Plat, a very classic Louis Vuitton silhouette, but this one's done in the same emprunt leather and it has a chain details as well. And the hardware looks a little different. The hardware is reminiscent of another handbag brand that I've seen in the women's where they have this very industrial looking hinges where the handles are. Louis Vuitton had a Nomad version of the sack plat, which is their smooth premium leather. So based on the added hardware as well as the chains, I would estimate this at $3,300 which is a couple hundred dollars more than the existing Nomad sack plat. He had a version of the clutch box, but looking at the photos, I'm pretty sure it's a soft version. So it's only slightly structured. Nicolas Gasquiere did a similar version with the Petite Mal, where he had a soft version, but it still had the hard metal corners. I forget if the corners were metal or not, but it, it kind of looks semi-structured, but most of it was soft. So this one, I would estimate it at 5,500. It kind of, I don't know how the inside looks like and how structured it actually is, but if it is completely soft and it's just that the corners are hard and maybe the closure's hard, I think 5,500 would be my guess. I'm comparing that to the Monogram Eclipse and monogram regular monogram clutch box that were versions of the ones they did on for the runway for kim jones's last collection and those were i believe around six thousand dollars the titanium version was just way more expensive i think it's us was over twenty thousand dollars and the last bag i wanted to feature is this looks like a blanket bag but it's i think based on the serious bag which is Louis Vuitton's large travel bag. So 
the canvas version is basically just one big bag with one large zipper that went all the way around it in a rectangular fashion. This one's harder to estimate because I didn't see a reference for an all leather version that Louis Vuitton made. The Sirius 70, which is the largest that Louis Vuitton makes in canvas is around $2,500. If you were to apply that same 20% to the leather upcharge, it would be 3,000. However, this is such a large piece that the material cost is gonna be probably higher if 20% is the standard formula that Louis Vuitton uses. Plus the difference here is that the corners are, look they look like they're metal, whereas a serious version, the original one only has two leather corners on the bottom. Of course, the serious one also has the special runway treatment and it has the chains as well. So a conservative estimate for me, if it's completely hollow inside, where it's just one huge compartment, I might say it's 5,500. And that would be less than the large steamer because the steamer just has more parts to it, at least from what I can tell on the outside. So those were my selected looks and the selected leather goods as well as some pricing estimates for you. So thank you for watching. That's my recap review. In the next half of this video, I'm going to just go through the entire runway collection. It's about 14 minutes, so you can stick around if you haven't seen it, if you just want to go through it. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'm really interested to know what you think about this collection. I really want to hear what you thought of it, how it compared to Kim Jones. Do you think you're going to continue to be a customer now that the men's is under Virgil's direction. Are you excited for future collections? And are there pieces that you have your eye on from this spring summer 2019 collection? So comment below or check me out on Instagram as well. That's sometimes a little easier to have a dialogue with me or if you wanna comment on my post, which I will do one for this as well. I'm gonna show some of the selected pictures on my Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you like to see more videos, you'll know when the latest video will drop. So thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. And if you wanna stick around to look at the rest of the runway, it will go on from here.
Thank you.